committee door. Uh, is there any changes or additions to the agenda as presented? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to talk about the director's orders and I'd like to talk about the role on the 15 million Okay. Anything else? Um, is the board prepared to approve the meeting minutes for August 2nd and August 5th? Uh, motion to move second. Second. Second, any discussion? Down all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Rosemary, you got four. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm nice. I think those are in the wrong days. I think that yeah. we should be approving September 6th. Oh, yeah, that's a good catch. August 2nd and September 6th? I think just September 6th. Okay. Uh, I will entertain another motion for only to approve the meeting minutes for September 6th. Motion to approve meeting minutes for September 6th. We have a second. I can second. Second. Okay, we have a second. We'll Seeing none, all those famous things by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, now we'll see. Okay. Uh, one board for our guidance in the year and I can catch them again first. Yeah, that's probably a good news. Seeing some of that was due to a uh, pilot, about 60,000 more. Mm -hmm. It was due to what? Is there? Pilot. And we didn't do the work on this, this building. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 30,000. Okay. And that was out of our operating budget? Yes. So our number is 168. Okay. So we're going to move that down to the top house. So we'll probably put it into the budget. We'll develop our budget. We'll we'll yeah. Okay. That's I thought usually I would sell that. We used to, but uh, it was a couple of years ago, voters asked us. Really, we should be spending that because we weren't authorized. And we develop our budget, we put it in the air, whatever surplus we have. Okay. Any other discussion? Okay. Any other discussion? So, how does that work with like, the committees? I know that one committee, anyway, has asked for their surplus to earn their service. Yes, that's only in the year report, right? Yep. And we bring that up. I, was that part of your reserve fund the way it was approved by the voters, or is that something? Um, Rosemary, do you recall the exact fund with for historical money? I know we checked for rent. Uh, I have to check. I, I, I'm, we're going to have to go over the exact word to see whether that's. Uh, it's different word. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And depending on the wording, that's what we have to follow. Whatever the voters do. Okay. A little bit more information on that next time or tonight? Uh, next time. Okay. Sarah Davis Cole, the HR, is not going to be with Drew Johnson. She said it's too bad for the past. She lives in the ground with Drew Johnson. Okay. So we'll have to find a new attorney for taxes. Okay. 
Should we put RFP? Or is there a local attorney? Is your local attorney come up with the day? Sometimes as well. Oh, okay. I know sometimes you jump out and you just work for me. Oh, he does tax service? I believe so. I'm not under the tax office. But I can. I'll be seeing him this week at the uh, person. Is, is the board? Uh, okay with that last Jim Barlow, he's doing tax sale. I don't know that uh, Beth and Evan have met Jim before, but Jim isn't the town's attorney. He was somebody that we considered for town's attorney, uh, but he's worked with the town on a handful of other, you know, kind of single issue projects. Uh, and we have a Good working relationship with him, given that he's not our attorney. We worked with the lead for many, many years. Yeah. So we did work with him a lot. Yeah. 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 I want to inquire with him. Um, my thoughts are the self storage is appealing his PCA decision to the property valuation review. Okay. How long will that take? I sent something to the assessor to say it could take up two years. Okay. I have sent it to the state and to our town attorney. And my recommendation that the town attorney defend the town. Mm -hmm. Board okay with that? Regarding the American Domestic Plan, the date we have received. Three hundred seventy-two thousand dollars, half of the state money and half of the county money. Additional funds last year. Um, I have one question on the revenue miscellaneous reimbursements. That's a really high number. It's twenty thousand. We budgeted for four. Yeah, that um, land records grant for that. Uh -huh. An offsetting expense for it. Okay. Yeah. To the rest of your report. Packages or anything like that. Yeah, this is for your review. Is that everything you had? Yeah, and current taxes, they were has collected. 40% and it's because last year the taxes were not due until September 30th and the year before we had total collectors 36% so we're slightly ahead two years ago. Okay. If anybody's interested that the, the Excel spreadsheet was one I made for my own use to look at line by line. Uh, as long as I had it included. Somebody like to try it? Sure. Yeah. Oh, try it. Yeah. yeah. And it's color coded to highlight places where we have a large deviation from accepted. Nothing else. If we've got any questions, the vote three. Basically, we've got the four. Well, 
No, you get to the floor. I, I thought you were sitting down there, so I'm going to put yours down there. I didn't see it. Uh, but I got to Thank you. Uh, yeah, so uh, we ended up building this there on Fox Hall for that grant project. And the only thing that might change is uh, on that common task is uh, the ditching on Swamp and Grove. Because there might be a different project in the works, I guess. We'll talk about that a little bit when we talk about uh, disposition of the remaining uh, FEMA grant that, and FEMA resources. Uh, so that might change some of Jason's upcoming plans uh, and where we use the excavator while we've got that rented. <laughs> Yeah, these have been going good. Uh, we got two quotes for the, the pavement there. And I reached out and got a quote for the hemlock cleaning for Washington Bridge. I got one quote back today, well, about an hour and a half ago. And I got to reach back out to KNR to see if they're available because two weeks ago they were behind. Mm -hmm. I hadn't heard from each other. So. Snapping off, uh, great. You know, 
I'm putting that two feet up in the ground. They just snap right off. So we just be going around, take them out as you know, you know trying to take them out and then out still got a bunch of food more. So. Okay. Because they're just there's so many of them at there's a lot of where you need to start. Yeah. yeah. But they're a bunch of town props, you know, down by our town property. Yeah, that's that's fashion. Thank you. Okay. Other question, Jason? Well, on that strategy, like I travel up roads in the first two years, I'm having a ride. That's what we, yeah, the quad road and other friends were doing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's used for like town to town travel. And like other friends, everybody's using commuting because of 15 was right. yesterday. So, Ooh. thank you. Okay. Thank you, Jason. Uh, racial justice here. Uh, I'll report today because okay. Eric doesn't have a vaccine, so um, I'm happy to do it. Um, so, a lot of um, public display stuff. Uh, we just flew the progress and my flag of the screen for Vermont Friday. Um, and that's August 28th, which was so beautiful. So we got bigger <coughs> bigger flags with the now standard size flags under, which was a situation that was known as the village this week. So we ended up doing the flag for the next size up the third flag for that whole. Standard size flat um, So the pride line is now gone, that has come down, and we got a standard size Black Lives Matter flag that's flying on us right now. Um, at the last village trustee meeting, they uh, passed the motion unanimously to fly the Mohegan band of the Pusik Amhat Nation flag for the week of Indigenous Peoples Day, October 10th through October 16th. And I received the consent of Chief Tom Stevens of the Nalita Band um, of the United Nations. And um, we're borrowing the flag from Roger Marku, who is in the state of the world, to see it. Um, so that's going to be flying for the week of October 10th to the 16th. Um, and we will probably work to make some sort of announcement for a conference forum and, and the town uh, Facebook page. And Chief Don Stevens was very, very gracious and honored that we were flying as a town and said, run whatever materials you want by me and I'm going to be feedback. And so that was a good relationship for this coming holiday. Um, also, as far as public displays go, um, Lisa Cruz helped paint and uh, let me use for my neighbor. And um, 11 by 17 mm -hmm. um, sheet that kind of just um, designed with the town inclusivity statement and anti racism statements on it. So we laminated some of those, got one at Old Mill Park, um, at the post office the kiosk down here in the kiosk. So we said it's on the group room, we can paint we can there. Um, and then we have and one at Jenna's Promising Goods, thanks to Shane. And um, I think that's all they are of now. And then we hope to bring them to. Other uh, profits, profits and businesses around town like the SCD, Murderway, and NGU, and um, ask any businesses if they'd like to hang on in their establishments. Um, speaking of just public display and the inclusivity statement, we would love as a committee to help hang the painted inclusivity statement in the vestibule. Um, and if we could kind of designate an area where that could go. We would be happy to put it out. You know, we have tools and levels among us. So um, we would definitely love to see that up in the best field. I think it would uh, really be great just as, as people walk into the town hall to see that and be able to stop what you're talking about. That's quite lovely. Um, so maybe we can talk about that. Um, if there's a some place that you would like it to be, we could discuss in the meeting or um, just someone. Oh, I think just get it up. I don't think yeah. we've discussed it. So as, we can just get that. As far as I'm concerned, we I think we agreed to it. The trustees yeah. agreed to it. Great. There's yeah, we agreed to that a long time ago. Fantastic. Yeah. Then we will just make that happen. And there seems to be really just one, I may be mistaken, but one wall there that it will like get on. Yeah. So yeah. I think it'd be great to do that. Yeah. 
Perfect. Yeah, so we're happy to do that. Just wanted to let you know. So if you see us in there with drills and stuff, you know, not to be worried. Um, and let's see here. One small thing that um, kind of along the same line as a visual, we haven't brought it up in the committee yet, so this is just coming from me, but the, um, the Millennium um, uh, Parade um, collage that's in the rest room, kind of front and center, there's a photo with someone just like a Take Back Vermont sign. Um, and I just think it's a little inappropriate to have that in the municipal building, given it's discrimination against same sex marriage, um, people who are gay and lesbian. So um, we will talk about that as a committee, but I think the sooner the better that that one photograph gets removed is probably best. I don't think we want that coding that history in our, in our town municipality. Um, so then that's kind of all the public display stuff. And then the workshops we have coming up, I forgot to remind our state of websites of the Human Rights Commission. And it looks like we are going to do the second training on Zoom after all. It was going to be in person, um, but she found somebody to help her only on Zoom. I think she would like to do it with somebody facilitating it. So um, she has already set up the two. Um, I know Brian set up a Zoom thing also, and then she sent me. She had already set up a Zoom thing with registration included. So I guess we'll just use her to probably post that before Thursday, which will be a week away from the first training, um, and have people register for that. And then, again, the first one is the explicit bias training, and the second one is bystander intervention. Um, so those workshops are coming up. And um, then as far as the workshops are kind of related, I know you all agreed to um, Send, give us a lot of recommendation for the rapid response grant. And so we're just waiting on that. It's been a couple weeks. So we really hope to get that and help our fundraising efforts. Um, and let's see. Other than that, I guess I just wanted to make sure that we were going to have time to discuss the recommendation to the racial justice committee. Um, and if now is the time for us to have a conversation around it, then we would be open to that. I noticed it just had five minutes before, and I would hate to not be able to have a conversation. And Jeff, I don't know if you want to jump in here, because then Jeff made a motion kind of with the caveat of, of let's let's talk about let's talk about why our second recommendation wasn't um, taken because we're so happy to have Jeff on the committee and it already feels like the workload is being shared, um, which is great. Uh, Jeff, I don't know if you want to. So I'm happy to, or I noticed the opportunity to discuss that recommendation specifically. Yeah, we'll be discussing the uh, racial justice committee appointment okay. later on. Great. I just wanted to make sure we got this time for that. Okay, then um, I think that that is everything. I have oh, one, one other thing. Um, we did get a chance to have a discussion um, based on the concerns of citizens not feeling welcome at um, our racial justice community meetings. And we had quite a lengthy discussion about it. And from my perspective, and I think everyone in the room, it felt like it was very open. We all were able to kind of articulate and like a, a really important part of this committee, I think, because there's so many strong feelings around it, there's so many different angles to approach social equity and racial justice. It's just to let everybody know that nobody knows the way to do it. And that we're all learning and we're all figuring it out and nobody is right and nobody is wrong. And because everyone who shows up at those meetings is vulnerable and thinks that they don't know enough about some topic. And um, so I just really want to share that with everybody the group that we did, we discussed it, and Raven had a great point of how where she works, they have a list of core values and kind of trying to incorporate that and let it be known of, of just the respect and the inclusivity that we want to bring to these meetings and make sure that that is known um, to the public. So we addressed that at the, at the last meeting. I thought we had a great meeting ever since we've been in person. They just been, they felt very um, productive. So that's that in my report. Thank you. Any questions? Um, I have a question. Yeah. Who is this? Well, I have a statement. Uh, we should take that picture. 
because she didn't have to talk about it, but take that provocateur. And it's clearly a political movement, and I've heard a lot of discussion around um, the tabs supporting political movements, and I don't feel like and that belongs to us. I agree. I didn't hear what she said. I mean, I've got my hearing aids turning up full blast and oh, okay. mask on. I, okay. can't hear. I said that I think we can take down the take back from up picture right away. Um, we, as a select board, have talked a few different times about political movements and our town shouldn't be political. And that was clearly a political movement. So I don't think that I think our select board should just own it and just have it taken down. Okay, I agree with that. Yeah. Okay. Can you bring that to trustee? Make sure they're okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any other comments or questions? None. Uh, uh, I do have one other comment. Uh, when did a question? When did you need the letter? Um, we. Uh, it was approved three weeks ago, and so um, our application is basically done. We're, we're waiting on the approval letter. Okay. And do you have a deadline for that? It's a rolling application, so luckily okay. no. But yeah, it would be great to get it as soon as possible. Thank you, Doug. I'm sorry, Eric. I'm curious, Rosemary, did any, um, I know I just sent in a donation, but did, did any donations come in for racial justice after the last, from her form the last? Uh, two okay. okay. Um, Brian, are we ever going to have plan commission report again? I'll get with uh, uh, Paul. Okay. I haven't seen one of those before. Huh? Yeah. Uh, so, Katie, we two bits. Yes, uh, for the Katie. Um, we received the uh, bid from Old English National before. Uh, at the board's request, we took it out to uh, an RFP again uh, with a deadline of this afternoon. Um, we spoke to a couple more uh, outfits, but the only one that was interested was, was uh, Slayton. Did submit a, a bit of decline too before, but I guess somebody opened up a schedule where he was available and he submitted a bid for us. Uh, so to compete with the all things actual. So you have the two bids we've received. There's a big difference in uh, the estimate of funding. Any thoughts? Yeah. <clears throat> what I think is that the all thing basketball bid when we walk around uh, and check out the different sites. He was thinking of laying down a little bit more than Kevin or Slayton was uh, wanting to lay down. Like for the library parking lot, he's uh, Slayton is only calling two and a half inches where all thing basketball was four inches on that. And uh, same around the camp basis, he wanted to put five inches around the mantle and stuff. And uh, Slayton wants to put four inches, wants to prep it down three and a quarter inches in the compaction. He puts four inches and mix in the compaction three and a quarter. So he does all the time. And so you find that's about what's there. I didn't measure exactly how much was there, but that's about what's there. Good. You mentioned to me before the meeting also about the 21. Hundred dollars uh, yes. on here for plot road, which is an addendum to uh, Kevin Slayton, and it's not included in this one. Yeah, uh, Slayton was supposed to put that point at that bid for that uh, project on a different uh, bid, but put it on the same one, uh, and he gave it to me when I sent it over to Brian. So that twenty-one hundred dollars, technically, Brian reached out to Hutchins about seeing if they'll credit. The 2100 or do the work that so there's a paved driveway up there that they put a secret broke and the residents can't get their cars in and out. So if we get credit, the 2100 comes out of slates, and so that makes it considerable. Yeah. But it's 72 tons of asphalt versus 56. 
Right. Yeah. Yeah, that that's should just be the difference should be in the location of the thickness of the application. Uh, you know, the, uh, Slayton is applying a thinner coat to each project. Did all things asphalt actually? I mean, they have an expiration date on the cold. Did they say they'd honor it? Maybe. I assume they would. Yeah, yeah. I think he might have just had on it. He knew it was up to approve. You guys know, had to approve. So yeah. had to approve it. Availability. We can do it before winter. I think they both can, but fire is convenience and the, uh, the town not having to pay a little bit of overtime for the town employees. Uh, Slate is a better choice, I feel, because the other guy can only do it. He works for Hutchins, he's their foreman, and he can only do it on Fridays and Saturdays. So some of us would have to figure on a Saturday to make sure that they had everything you know, with it where it was. That was all things? Yeah. I'm not very happy with the town or town price for Ken and Slate. But it is going to be considerably cheaper to go with him. And if you think that uh, his approach is uh, good enough, uh, then I think we would be foolish to spend any more money. Do you have have you done the math to see or has he called out somewhere what he's charging per ton? I'm not seeing that call out. I would say he has more in a truck. I mean, I know he has smaller trucks. Uh, he has single axle trucks where the other guys are using him. So I'd say he has more in a truck and costs is why he's doing that. I would have to guess. I don't know that for sure, but that's why I feel that. Because he told me he only had a capability of a single axle. And I was like, all right. So I'd ask him, hunting wise, up there, he's, it's 12 pounds for the project on Boston. I was like, are you going to be able to do that on one truck? Me, they don't have to use two. So. But still, we're talking close to 200000 So if we do not factor out the $2,100, we go with the total value. So, I mean, it's 175 per ton versus 159 per ton. And I, I would uh, uh, which is 175 way. and 155. Without talking to him to find out where he's pulling the mix from, he might be getting it from Pike, where I know all things as well as pulling from Hutchins, because that's where he works. He probably gets a discount because it's a form in there. So that. If he gets a discount, it should have given us a better deal. All things as well as want to get a discount, but probably because he works for Hutchins. Probably why it's a little cheaper. I need to get it from. What is it? Well, I don't really think it, like either one of them to tell you the truth. I just want to work on it. If anything, we've got to pick one. No, I guess somebody else can. It's Friday and Saturday a problem for you guys. It's no, not a pain, but it's not a problem. Yeah. It, 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 it's not a deal. You have our own time with it. Yeah. Which, and this does not include plot road. It does not include plot road because he was unaware. We were all unaware at the time because when he gave the quote, Hutchins had not even technically started yet. We could probably add another 2,500 at least to all things asphalt for that. Same amount of prep work for you guys either way. I guess it'd be a little bit more if we had to take our ass along. So you'd be talking 14,000 in all things asphalt. Still in your they may be, they may not be. Wish in one hand. Like any other. So, what's the benefit of having more asphalt? Is there a benefit? Does it last longer? Does it not last longer. All depends. If there's a lot of things, I mean, <laughs> it, it should last longer, but 
there's no absolute guarantee that uh, you know what the, at the library parking lot, the ground getting saturated with water, frost heaves, things like that are more likely to damage the parking lot than an extra inch or two of asphalt. And that extra inch isn't going to change the frost heaves. No. Yes. So it will technically survive longer with more cars driving over for a longer period of time, but that's also not likely to be what damages it. Are you putting drainage in the library? On your park we were when we excavate the uh, pull the asphalt out, we were going to pull it down six inches and put better material in under it. And that's why Kevin felt that two and a half inches was adequate for what he wanted to uh, for the weight for what we like. He said there was no dump trucks getting the ground work daily, just tires and trucks. Right work is the key to any job, you know. So you could have 10 feet of asphalt before prep work and you still have a problem. So, hey, anyone's work for over 150 feet and say, they drained that thing all summer long and right on this. I know they still got a top to put on. <laughs> Basically, uh, for a tonnage, all things asphalt is a little cheaper, uh, a fair amount cheaper. However, the overall price is cheaper with uh, Kevin. Sleep. Yes, for the pleasure. Couldn't you tell them how much how big you wanted to be? Like, couldn't you go with all things asphalt and tell them to put down less than what they said they were going to do? Yeah, presumably, if we came back and said that we would like less on there, I would be surprised if uh, if, if they came back and said no. But you also have the thought that they would uh, increase the tonnage price too. If you decrease the inch size, well, a lot of the cost is going to be in trucking. So, did he set that where he's going to use a, you know, a whole load, or are we going to make him bring out a partial load to do this, where we pay almost as much money because we've got to pay the full trucking price, whether it's a full load of asphalt or you know three quarters of a load of asphalt. I kind of have to agree with Donna said though, really, we didn't put this out and say we wanted X number of inches here, X number of inches there, you know, prep work. And so really, we do not have an apples to apples comparison on either one of these bits. We just asked them to put in a proposal. Right. One is uh, recommending that we could go with a lesser amount. We feel that. Well, we should have probably got to the public works supervisor and had him come up with what he wanted and then shoot it out to bid with the specifications for the same for every single bid. And we didn't do it that way. We didn't, and we need to move. So, what's. Yes, we always need to move. Yeah. We always, with the 11th hour, it's like I said last week, put this up. You know how I feel. I'm not going to. I'm not going to approve either one. So, get your motion from somebody else. My motion that we approve the bid from all things asphalt for miscellaneous paving projects around town. We have a motion for all things asphalt paving project. Do we have a second? I'll make a second for the purposes that we can discuss it. Okay. Because we need to discuss this more. <laughs> we have a motion. We have a second. Um, uh, giving the contract to all things asphalt. What's your preference for all things asphalt? There's more material. It seems like a lot of the projects I see where the mix comes out of that plant in Irisburg is pretty hard mix. Stays pretty good. A lot of base, a lot of base, and a lot of it for sure. And they're doing the base work either way. Um, Friday and Saturday sucks a little bit, but we're getting more material. If it's a one, if it's a one day or it's a two day, and we're not gonna, you know, he didn't specify. All he said he wanted to do it on Friday and Saturday. We're not gonna shave them down. I mean, what what are they trucking now? Sixteen tons of wood at the front of the dump truck. Well, what are you thirty-two? Like that? Is there a twenty-two release on a triax? On a triax, oh yeah. 
it's now before this board again, and this board hasn't decided how to move forward. So I'm looking for some direction from the board on which way you want to go. Or a motion. All right. Thank you. Um, so if I'm hearing Jeff correctly, he's looking for, as I, um, for like, for a reason for not accepting a recommendation from the standing committee. I mean, so I, I, I'm just like, is there a reasonable request so that moving forward, that's important information? The, the board made its decision last month. I'm, I want to move on. It's now before the board how we proceed forward. And, and the reason why that I think the most public is not an acceptable answer is because this is precedent setting, setting that you're not, we you talked about a precedent, setting a precedent for not appointing, but the board set a precedent by not taking a recommendation from a committee that in my tenure, I never remember ever, ever doing. So that for me as a chair of another committee, is that creates a, a bit of a red flag in my mind because now you've opened up a can of worms that has never been opened before and we as chairs don't understand this process um so going back to the criteria what there i don't remember criteria or policy and maybe that needs to be written if you expect us to be able to follow it as, as chair and as committee members. Yeah, I look for some guidance from the board. How do you want to proceed? Well, I'm going to use uh, some of your words actually on the May 6, 2021 Racial Justice Committee. Kyle said it is 2021. Why are women and people of color always at the end of the line? It is frustrating and exhausting that she and Jackie have to bring this up. We need to listen to women and people of color and bring them to the forefront. She asked that the committee, please make sure that people who reach out are validated, heard and responded to. Sophia said uh, she couldn't agree more. She apologized to Jackie for having the emails go by the wayside. Well, you know, I, I believe that there's not enough diversity on this committee. And, uh, how many women are already on this committee? Three. Okay. Uh, you have plus a woman of color and you have two males, right? But you do not have any males of color uh, on this committee. And I, I for one, do not think it is diversified enough. And it should be, you should have more diversity. Are you pulling that to all committees? Well, I'm just talking, especially this one. Mm -hmm. because this is a racial justice committee. Mm -hmm. And so that those are the words right there, racial justice committee. And I think it should have a mix of all colors, actually. And so that's my take on it. I do not think it's diverse enough. So is that a criteria? Is it so, forward it doesn't necessarily mean a criteria. I was asked what was the board's thoughts. Okay, I gave my thoughts to this. What the board does is up to the board. I am just giving you my feelings. Okay, thank you, Mike. Any other board member comment? How would you like to proceed? I'll move that we um, post uh, the opening and um, make asking for letters of interest sent to Brian and make an appointment. Uh, we have There's a motion on the floor. Is there a second? I'll second that. Second. Any discussion? Uh, so now this new protocol will be the opening for submission and then you are making the appointment now and not allowing us to interview the candidates like last time? Or, or will you take the submissions again, well, trust us to make the decision and bring a big recommendation to you? Well, the board has always, the board has asked you for a recommendation. We've 
got the right combination. Now, we've never relinquished our power to, or our authority or our responsibility for making committee appointments ourselves as a board. So we're retaining that, that is the intent. But do you, you understand what I mean? Maybe I didn't get are you going to ask us for a recommendation a second time? For the second law. For the second law of submissions. No, we, we asked you for your recommendation already. And so the board would take the action on its own. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that will be consistent across all committees then? If we get into a similar situation. Marco? Yeah, thanks. Um, I guess the similar situation, I, I just, I'm not sure if anybody else is in a little bit of confusion just about process and decision. And I just have always looked to this board, as other boards in the town, and I think transparency is just so important in sort of, you know, creating, building, and sustaining trust between elected officials and that this is sort of, and I, maybe I'm missing something, but I feel like I'm going to be leaving this, this meeting tonight feeling um, at the very least confused. And uh, I, I don't have any word for right now how to just how this process really seems to be. Um, may I? Go ahead, Beth. Um, so I have a lot of thoughts around this. And I've reached out to a few people unsuccessfully, unfortunately. Have a precise conversation. And the thing I struggle with is uh, the Racial Justice Committee represents the town. And in doing so, when we hear that town members aren't comfortable going to a meeting and being open, um, that's a red flag for me. And that's where I'm a little more critical than I probably otherwise would be. Um, that's kind of where I'm at right now. And you know, I read the anti-racism statement a few times. I read the inclusivity statement a few times. And there's this one line. I actually have it right here with me. And you can see my tattered paper. It's pretty rough, I have to say, because it sits beside my chair in my living room. And the line says, we are committed to listening and learning from our brown, from our black, brown, indigenous people and concerned citizens. And I feel like the Racial Justice Committee, this is what you're about, right? This statement is what you're about. And if we're hearing that concerned citizens aren't feeling safe, trusted, valued, any of those words that are about listening, that really concerns me. And for me, I'll be comfortable when I hear of a nominee who I think has those qualities and attributes and um, can help make the meetings more inviting. Um, and I and I and I think that the so the work you all are doing is valued greatly by me. Um, I really appreciate it. I get how hard it is. It's hard. It's really hard. It's not just hard, it's really hard. Um, I'm going to use a probably unpopular word, but it's a little bit clicky. It feels a little bit clicky. And it's really hard when it feels a little bit clicky. I'm telling you that from my personal opinion, like I don't come to those meetings because I don't feel like I'd be valued, frankly. I feel like I'd be cornered. Like I was well, I'm serious when I came in tonight. Like, I, I can relate to the people who are uncomfortable, and that concerns me. And if, if I knew of nominees who were brought to us that I thought um, could help change that tone, I would fully support them. Uh, but I just don't feel that way in this case. And you know, I just don't feel that way in this case. When you made your um... Your recommendations the first time. Did you did your committee go into executive session? Yeah. Okay. And so you made decisions in executive session on the floors. Did you when you came out, did you put into the record why you accepted some candidates and rejected others? I believe so. Yeah, I think we 
I mean, without crossing any sort of lines in executive session, I think we we described um, how all of the candidates who were there that meeting were qualified and how we really valued all of their input and hope that they continue to come to the meetings and contribute. And that's the funny thing about this really is that people do show up outside of the community members do show up, which I know does not frequently happen at committees. It's usually just the community. Um, so community members do come and do contribute and they do have a part in how the agenda goes, in how the conversations go. Um, so we we did we did address that. Um, but again, without going into specifics, I guess. And I don't I yeah. don't know where the lines Draw as right. 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 I guess the, the point of the point is that uh, you went into executive session for a reason because there are certain decisions, certain conversations that, that you have behind closed doors that you didn't have publicly. <coughs> that's, that's okay. We got a motion on the floor before I recognize any more public members. Is the board ready to vote or are coming up on eight o'clock? We have a whole agenda ahead of us. Eric, make it quick. I'll do my best. Um, I hold you all in very high esteem. I, I really do. I think your public service on this select board has been outstanding. And the time that I've been witnessing you, I think you guys do a great job. But I also know you care about what people think, which is why I'm going to give you my unvarnished opinion. Um, much like I think Jack Stanton would do. Um, sitting on a committee in this town or doing any kind of role in public service requires qualifications, dedication, and skills. Uh, Jackie Stanton showed up for every one of our committee meetings. In fact, until I missed the last one, I think Jackie and I are the only two people who've been at every single one. She shows knowledge and passion and skill about the area. Uh, and the only knocks I have heard against her have been that she is somehow confrontational or maybe makes people slightly more comfortable. Um, and frankly, that's kind of part and parcel with the role of being on a racial justice team. And that's kind of part and parcel with being one of these things where you kind of have to identify your own biases and figure out what historical items are acting on you and your community to kind of draw you down. It's not comfortable. And so if people are showing up at these meetings and they're really analyzing issues, discomfort is part and parcel of the deal. It really is. And so if we have a community member that's making, bringing up issues and confrontational issues and speaking truth to power in ways that make people a little bit uncomfortable, that means they're doing their job as part of this thing. And, and I think that I've not, you know, I've sat with Jackie in lots of meetings and I've witnessed a lot of select board meetings, candidate forums, uh, racial justice committee meetings, other committee meetings. And I, I've heard a lot of people speak and I've heard a lot of people say some things that people would consider offensive, you know? But that's part of democracy. Sometimes it's a little offensive. People speak their minds. But I think for someone who's speaking truth to power, who's a woman, she's been giving inordinate attention as being some kind of divisive force that is not deserved. And I would say anyone who is seeing that she is somehow some kind of divisive force in this community, really gotta look at the work that she's done, her job, through activism, through this committee, and think about why do you think that that person in particular is divisive, why so many other people don't get the same scrutiny. Mm -hmm. You're all good people, you really are, but we all have biases, mm -hmm. we all do, I have them. And I think you really need to think about what is it about this particular person that made her not even get a nomination for this committee? I think it really speaks volumes. You, you good folks, I've talked to you. And Beth, I talked to you about the bottom of the stairs and asked you questions and I lobbied for a position as part of public service. It's not for me. I didn't say anything or, or, or say anything rude. I was pretty respectful. Wrap it up here, please. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm gonna get my I'm gonna get my, my, my minute in here. Um I, I, I would strongly urge you to reconsider this. This person is not being cons considered for this position, not because of their qualifications or their skill or their passion or knowledge, but because of political positions. Uh, a reputation has been assigned to them that is completely undeserved, which you know, and, and also because of petty grievances. I think for the good of this community, you should strongly consider it to nominate this person as part of the community. She's done great work. I've been a part of this community all along. Nobody sends more emails with information and knowledge than she does. She's going to continue to show up and do it, I'm sure. And, and it seems, 
a disservice to our community and to other committees to not take most qualified people available for this position. And to speak to Mike's point, you know, I, I would love to have more diversity on the committee. And, and I think you'll know that as a member of the select board, that every person of color who's applied to this committee is currently on this committee. We have not had other applicants. So Jackie's not being, uh, we're not passing over a more diverse applicant for, for this person, right? That's, that's a thing. So you're good folks. I've asked you to analyze the biases and your own personal grievances and nominate the person who's best qualified for this position. We made the evaluation. We did the work. And I think that this committee has a lot of expertise on it for people who understand what this work means in our community. And I think getting some input to the select board about evaluating personnel and people in your community might have a lot of good things to say about how to evaluate personnel accurately. I think you should take input from the public and committees who appoint for that expertise. Thanks for giving me a little time. I appreciate it. I gave you a lot. Thanks, sir. <laughs> Okay, the board ready to vote? State the motion, Mr. Chairman. Motion is posted back out for openings, basically, and we would decide in the month. Next meeting. Multi. That's the motion. There's a second. Any more discussion? All those in favor, signify saying aye. 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 Those opposed? You guys have it. Rose Cemetery. Uh, we have asked the patient to take a look at Rose Cemetery, uh, the boundaries of the maintenance around the cemetery. Duncan has come back with uh, advice for us to install a fence there if, if there is some kind of encroachment and uh, loose uh, loose boundaries around the, the cemetery. Um, my suggestion is that I go up to the folks and uh, similar fence to what we have around the cemetery. I'd imagine, yeah, pretty similar. Uh, I'll get a quote probably from round trees that um, are benefit the board. You know, follow our procurement policy. Now, how did he find the boundaries? I know he came to the board a couple months ago. Is that really I suspect that, that installing a fence is going to incorporate a survey uh, because I don't think that we have an accurate enough idea on where the fence, on where the line goes. We could install a fence around what we, what is definitely ours. But that could be ceding some of the land to the neighbors. Uh, if we're too conservative about where the fence goes. There was a remnants of an old fence. Not in any substantial. Okay. Okay, we need to have this survey before we go out for a quote. Uh, I'm going to go out with a. Uh, my suggestion is to get a, an estimate from somebody to install a fence. We'll walk the property with that person, have a decent idea of, you know, what does it look like? And do we, at that time, I'll, have a, I'll be better able to recommend for a surveyor or not. I, I think that it's probably going to, but I think going out there with a qualified you know, installer would help help me make that determination. Go ahead, Matt. So my sense is that we should get this on the list. Um, there are a couple of other cemetery related issues on the list that I think maybe we should address before taking another on. I, I would ask maybe Duncan or whoever has the knowledge to stake out the boundaries or at least the corners with um, with stakes, but I think um, you know, we need to get to the, if there's time for the, for this, we should put it more towards the plot cemetery uh, really to take over the, the trust funds um, and just look at the simulation to the priorities that we already have on the table. Sure. 
Yeah, I can kind of, I, so what I'm hearing it is, don't take this on myself, but you know, ask Duncan to come back with a more specific proposal for fencing and or surveying, something we can vote up or down. Exactly. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay. Well, Thanks, is this the most pressing cemetery issue? I, it could be the most pressing cemetery issue for Duncan. I don't think it's the most pressing cemetery issue for, for me. Yeah, I think that is. I think all of our cemeteries have issues. Yeah, we have the plot cemetery. We need to close that. Yep. Cemetery. Um, yeah. Okay. We're back. Disaster projects. All right, closing up the remaining disaster projects. Uh, the first part, I would ask uh, that the board assign me authorization to sign our uh, standard subrecipient agreement and uh, uh, reporting, reporting for Department of Public Safety uh, on behalf of the town to secure uh, $21,000 reimbursement from FEMA for the work related to the 2019 Halloween storm that's already been completed. It's a board's pleasure. Authorizing control. Right. Sign. Motion is second. Any discussion? This will include restoring Rocky Road? No, this mm -hmm. is the. I don't have the road list in front of me, but it's all the roads other than Rocky Road and I think uh, Reservoir were the only two that were included. So when do we deal with when we have the roads? Uh, that's the next point I'm going to get to uh, under this topic. Mm -hmm. uh, and another uh, discussion. Is there anything that's going to impact this decision on your other topics? No, but we can come back. We can discuss that and then come back to it. Um, so we don't have to necessarily hold it up here if you want to continue discussion. Any more discussion? All in favor, signify saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, go forward. So the other part to this is Rocky Road. Um, for Rocky Road, there was, the last response I got from FEMA was a pretty detailed set of questions they had about uh, financial impact uh, of the storm and uh, some future projections. I got with LCPC, uh, with Seth, uh, Seth and Rob uh, over there to get a better evaluation of what would it take for us to be able to answer these questions. Because they, they were detailed enough engineering questions that I couldn't answer uh, alone. It would need a significant amount of, of engineer's time in order to answer this question. So it would require some additional expenses in order to answer this round of questions. And we don't know that this is the last round of questions that we would get from FEMA before we were approved for mitigation or not. We would spend enough money for engineers to do the job ourselves. And we have been farting around with this for two years. We need to move forward and open up that bridge, period. My recommendation is that we restore the road to its prior condition. We will be able to seek reimbursement from FEMA for that part of the project, of just the cost of restoring the road to its prior condition. We then have a few options for, um, for still pursuing mitigation. Uh, it would mean that we'd have to go back over the work that we just did, but I still think it's uh, a worthwhile endeavor. Um, we might be able to get the engineering work that we need done as part of the uh, assessment and maintenance plan that we want to do on the Rocky Road Bridge. Since this is an approach to the bridge and it's related to the general health of the bridge, we think that that would be acceptable under the transportation alternatives grant. Uh, there's also BRIC, which I don't remember what BRIC stands for, but it's another, uh, it's another grant option that's available for stormwater projects. And then there's also the 
Vermont Emergency Management, uh, stormwater plans, right? Yeah, we might be open for that goal. So we've got a further three options for pursuing funds to do the mitigation, design, final engineering, and uh, possibly implementation. So we're, we don't have to give up on mitigation and improving this with the low water crossing, but I think that we don't use FEMA for that and that we get what resources we can out of FEMA to restore the road to its proper condition. If we, I mean, we gotta get the road back over. It's ridiculous, there's more to this, but uh, if we get the additional engineering study, can we get a commitment from FEMA that the next time that washes out, and we know it will, the next high water event, that they'll do it right? No, no I don't think we can. <laughs> I mean, this is ridiculous. We... That's why nobody wants to deal with the federal government right now. Uh, they, they'll, they'll pay us every single year to fill that hole in. That's fine. But to try to do something that's going to stop that from happening and pay a few extra dollars, they're going to make us jump through hoop after hoop after hoop. Well, Just fill it in and move on. Right. Period. Let's do that. <laughs> you know, that. Probably I, should, I, yeah. I make a motion we fill it in. Get moving. Return it to its original. Exactly. We have a motion to return it to its original state. Second. Okay. Second. Second. Any discussion? You know, if you fill it with riprap and then you left it a little lower where you want it to walk out, I've seen that happen quite often. It seems to work pretty well. So it's kind of like an emergency spillway. And you just put your gravel over it, keep it so it's drivable. But you may only lose a little bit out of that. And I don't know if the town has any of the rock hanging around in the quarter in the area. Yeah, I do. So. We do know right. where you get some. I was thinking of rocking it, but that rip rap sounds good. You want big, you want big. So what happens is when that water comes up over that road, the washout occurs on the way down. Right? That's that's when you lose the road. It's not it's not pushing the road out. It's, coming up and down, and that's where the washing occurs. So if you can get that up to like within six, eight, eight inches, ten inches of the road you want, your repairs next time around should be way less. And maybe if you're willing to pay to fill it in, are they telling you that you have to use a certain product? And if they aren't, fill the riprap. Yeah. I want to amend my motion, Mr. Chairman. The rip yeah, I talked to you want to uh, round table class so that said about that when we keep going with from Ryan told me about that. And they suggested putting some of the big boulders we're prepping on together, building it up and leaving about a foot right. before you get to the top and top dressing it this way when it washes on take some photographs versus eight to ten feet. So. I want to find it. Just to okay, is that considered a friendly amendment? Second. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, I'm not sure. Is that how would that affect? Would they reimburse us if we didn't put it back the way it was? We have to build it up to our rodent rich standards. I think that we just a good base is all it is. There's enough rock sitting in our lower thing that we are not gonna have to go buy any rock for. Yeah, I think that we're gonna be able to do that and get reimbursed for it. I don't know that they're going to reimburse us for I think they might reimburse us for what they think it should cost rather than you know they might reject some of our bills if we say that we use rocks and they don't think we should have. We're building it to Roman road specifications. They started out with big rocks at the bottom and pyramided them up to the top. So that's exactly what we're doing. So I want to change it. Hopefully that will be friendly. My, my, my question is more about the state regulations and our rivers, um, municipal road permitting. Um, the state gets for first and when you start talking about recrafting banks with rivers, and that can change the stream flow of the stream. Yeah, maybe 
consequences? That's not, I don't know that that's necessarily what we're talking about here. I think it would include, like Greg said, you get the, the real scour happens on the down downward side. So we would probably put riprap up to the river bank on that side. So we might need uh, Chris Burnell, the, the river engineer's permission for that. Chris Burnell knows what we're dealing with here, and he's been pretty accommodating for us. So I don't, I don't think it's going to be too hard. Uh, well, I want, I want to get that sign up. So my recommendation uh, would be the original motion, and we we know what the board's desire is to make this as durable as possible, and we'll complete it with that in mind. Okay. Not to yeah. I <clears throat> personally feel that we should put the rock in. We can hold it back, but it's a lot easier if this happens again. It only moves fifty damn blows versus one hundred and fifty damn blows in the rivers. And the riprap doesn't have to go all the way. We don't have to bring it all the way to the river. We can bring it back and leave three feet and put the material back so it's not, you know, impacting the river. But, you know, I just need to get it right back to how it was. But I, I feel that, you know, for the rivers, and putting the sill into it is going to be better. Hold the we can hold the sill away and compromise the whole place with it. But, yeah. We'd be putting myself into the river yeah. and doing it the way we want to do it. The way we're talking about it right now. You yeah. think the state would support it? Well, yes. Uh, well, but, you know, I want this job done and uh, I don't want to fiddle fry around uh, for weeks or months on end to get an answer. friendly amendment was not approved by your secondary. So it's back to the original motion. However, Brian knows our intent. So he's going to try to work with us. Well, if they don't want to, they don't want to work with us. I think we need to, to bring it back for another vote. Well, because if I, if I the, the counterpoint to what you said, I agree with that. I understand exactly what you're saying. I think it's, I would like to see that happen. But the state could very possibly come back and say, well, we're wrapping what you described as not the say we're wrapping the bank. But if we were, Rip wrapping a quarter like that, or rip wrapping a shoreline like that, can actually increase the velocity of, of the water downstream, creating more erosion problems down in other parts of town. Or so I didn't realize you were a hydrologist. Well, I'm, I'm not, but I have read and listened to an awful lot of what LCB has, has told us and, and demonstrated to us about river science over the years. Um, so that's why I'm saying that we should, my, my point is we should listen to them and um, understand the full implications of it before we just take matters into our own hands and do what we think is best. Well, when this, when I was a village trustee of the state of the Rap all down by that bank by the wastewater treatment plant, that was no problem whatsoever. And that is less of what we're talking about, is less of a burden than that riprap on the bank down by the wastewater treatment plant. I didn't know you were a river scientist, Mike. Well, <laughs> Eric, of oh, course. Okay, so you're well, I don't know. I'm speaking by practical experience, but feeling John Clay not when I was born. I think you guys are both on our shot. I hope it makes you feel better. But anyway, <laughs> the, uh, when you're, but you're talking now, what you're saying is. Oh, yeah. The river banks, when it's running along, a river, you're right, it, it does do that. But when you're talking about a road, it's not going to change the velocity. And in the state of Vermont, we'll be happy that they always give you so much on each side of the top. Every job I've ever done, they usually give you 50 or 70 or 100 feet. So um, I don't think you're going to find any issues. And you know, Chris, if you have a hard time calling, let me know. I talk with them, text with them all the time. Yeah, be happy to set that up for you. Or help if I can. Yeah, Chris has always been good to us. Yeah. Um, I know what Chris is going to say. He's just going to say, hurry up and get it done. Yeah. yeah. Good. Yeah, I, I don't anticipate us having any problems. I'm just saying you're, you're 
your original motion gives us more room to do whatever we're allowed to do without necessarily having to come back. Okay, I'm going to stick with it, provided that you get on that, like stink on manure. All right? Yep. Sure. All right. I was just going to say um, some of the planning commission has been working on is trying to identify some of these class four roads that might not be in compliance that, you know, decide whether we make some changes or not. Um, but what Matt says about the municipal road grant is 100% correct. And not only that, I think uh, there might be some kind of interplay with the uh, Global Warming Solutions Act, where if there is anything, you know, environmental in nature that we are not clients with, not only is the state going to be unhappy about it, but we could potentially have private lawsuits going against us. So uh, I just say, err on the side of caution. Um, ANR is not always reasonable in the way they interpret and enact their rules. So stay out of trouble. <laughs> Thank you. Take a rule. Any other discussion? If not, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Rec, 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 reparation plan. Yep. So uh, Lisa has, has kind of requested that we take a little bit of time to think about and provide some direction for her. That she's got a lot of tasks that are uh, really taxing on the amount of time we have assigned uh, for us. the the the, the VORIC grant is. You know, one that we've been interested in, but it's taking a, a, a quite a bit of time. Uh, so I wanted to kind of lay out a little bit more detail uh, of what I think kind of our direction or our priorities for her would be. Uh, kind of writ large, I would think it would be preserving our existing recreation program. Uh, below that would be the pursuit of grants. And below that would be expanding our recreation offerings. And to provide a little bit more detail in there, uh, when we're talking about grants, there are really two, talking about grants it is a, a, a very diverse part of her job. She, you know, she has, has applied for and received quite a few relatively straightforward grants through Rise Vermont and other uh, smaller organizations that, that that do pretty straightforward, small scale grants uh, that, that tend to receive the money and use them up pretty quickly. She's also done some larger grants like the Playground grant that is significantly more involved, but it's still 100% recreation related. Uh, and, and that's gone really well. Momrec is getting into, it's got a lot more economic development activity and not just recreation. It's economic development as it relates to recreation, but it's not, it, it's getting a little bit beyond where she's comfortable. So I'm thinking that I'm kind of putting, I would recommend that we put that <coughs> Kind of near the back of, you know, again, kind of subdividing grants into grants to maintain and develop our current recreation activities and our current recreation options. And then the expansion, like Vorex, kind of at the, the back end of it. Well, economic development isn't the job. No, it's not. Uh, and I think that doing that, if we just, if we do, Decide that we're definitely going ahead with the something like the vote rate grant. I think that is going to start doing start taking more of my time uh, because that is yeah. as we're learning more about it. It's a lot more economic development related, less recreation activity, and the recreation activity is a little more incidental to the questions they're asking us to develop and answer about that problem. Is there anything that LCT might want to take on? We can meet and talk to them. I don't think this is really in their wheelhouse. But it does have uh, 
the VOMRA grant is pretty generous when it comes to paying for grant administration and program administration, which is something that LCPC tends to like. So this isn't like right in their wheelhouse, but this still might be something that they're interested in. So is your question about the VORIC grant or your question about Lisa's priorities? My question is really about Lisa's priorities, but the VORIC grant is kind of what's bringing this up as a kind of critical topic. Uh, so it's, uh, it, it overlaps a little, a little bit, it, it's kind of a, but chief among it is I want to kind of give her a clear direction on her first priority, especially being maintaining our current recreation offerings. Can I ask some questions around that? Go ahead. I have pretty intimate knowledge of what goes into recreation programs, uh, and it's a lot, and we are in September. And schools and state regulations have all become very lax in terms of children and their activities. And I am really uh, worried about this being out straight leading up to right now, knowing what is going to be happening over the next few months. Because she is going to be very busy with youth recreation programs that we've had for a very long time. Um, unless something significant changes in the next few weeks. Yeah. Um, and I don't see her having time for any grants if our priority of if her priorities are existing programs and then grants and then expansion. I don't even see her getting beyond the existing programs. I think that it would be a, a very limited amount of her time. Um, and yeah, it would depend a lot on factors outside of our control of how much. And then, the, yeah, and then the second thing that comes to mind is knowing all of that and knowing that there are ebbs and flows throughout the year. Do we get ourselves in trouble in terms of spending if in her free time, as parents don't have free time, but in her free time, she's um, being allocated to other resources and then in the spring, um, you know, we've hit the budget for that particular line item in the budget for her hours. So I'm just, I'm just a little bit worried about all of that. And what it to, on top of what it means for Lisa. We're, uh, overall, uncomfortable with where we're at for her hours and managing her time for the year. We've had some high weeks and we're going to have to manage that uh, but I'm, I'm i'm not worried about her overall for the year but i do think that if we set current recreation as her primary goal for right now um yeah we're going to have trouble using her time for, for anything else uh, and, and i think that the right grant uh I think it will be, it'll end up being a little bit more of my time, but I think it will end up being, you know, Casey, Lisa, and myself working on it, uh, but not as, with the uh, level of commitment that we had in, that, that we hoped we would have. Uh, I'm still very interested in it. I think it's got some really good opportunities, but. Uh, I hope that we would be able to do more with Lisa, but with, you know, we saw this with the soccer registration uh, coming up that it's her ability to do both. In, uh, we just don't have enough hours for her to, you know, to do that. She'll, she'll get, I know. <laughs> yeah, she'll get a couple of times here and there. Uh, we, have, we don't need to make any additional commitment to VORA. You know, we submitted a letter of interest. They haven't responded to it yet. So we don't know where that program is going yet. But. And if this is the one where, where this is the letter we submitted knowing we hadn't done our priorities at the time. Yeah. And didn't know where this economic development fell in that list of priorities. Yes. I, I think to your point, you know, this really isn't 
in her job description, and and it is in your job description. But if you feel that you have time restraints and might not be able to put the details on this, then I can I would ask, you know, should we be considering else in pieces? I think that yeah, I think that that's good. Um, I have more time that I can devote to Bullrick than I am right now, but I don't know that I have as much time as it needs. But if we took, if we talk about all of our priorities that we talked about, like this falls in the multi trail rec development group, right? Which goes behind building maintenance as a top in that category or economic development behind industrial, like industrial park. Like, if this is going to be a heavy lift, I don't see a way that we can support that heavy lift just given the priority discussions we have. Yeah. We don't have to make a final determination on Bowrick tonight, but know that if we're setting Lisa's priorities here, we are saying that this is less important and less likely to be completed. Correct. But I think that's the right decision. When you talk about existing preserving existing programs, does that include the skate park programs? Yes. Casey. Yeah, Casey was concerned about that, but I, I I don't personally see a necessary distinction. And with Lisa's help, we're kind of reducing that distinction of skate park programming versus other recreation programming. And uh, yeah, I hope that in the future we can eliminate it all together and it's all just. Yeah, recreation. Yeah. So I think the board's pretty much in agreement. What's your proposal? Okay. All right. Auditing. So I included in your packet a draft of auditing services. So this is based on a model proposal that uh, BLCT has put up. BLCT, uh, I also want to mention that uh, BLCT has, Thank you. Uh, is in the process of updating this and expanding their uh, financial services offerings. So we're out a little bit ahead of the league on this. Um, we can, you know, try and get some additional assistance assistance from them to help kind of figure out where we're at. Uh, but I also think this is, you know, a decent RFP. You know, like what we need. I think in pretty good detail. Was this a boilerplate one that they put out? And they just use the town of Randolph as an example. Uh, we're going to be a multi town town. Yeah. Right. Then I, I'm, I'm probably left Randolph in there in a few yeah. places. Second paragraph. For, yeah. for a minute, I thought you might have prolonged that Randolph or something. Yeah. So, um, no, the, the the model policy is the policy that, or is the proposal that Randolph wrote. Okay. Uh, so they don't have this hasn't been updated in quite a while. Uh, if if you recall, like the procurement policy, some of the other ones that we borrow from them that are more recently written are written a little more, you know, insert town name here rather than in this case they said, well, this is a really good one. You should write one like this. Right, and we just had to go and pull out Randolph for Johnson. Uh, we're not exactly the same as Randolph, so I made a, I made more changes yeah. than that. But yeah, I gather by reading it because we've done something of that uh, nature, but not substantially different. You know, it was more. You know, what's are you happy with this one that you kind of cleaned up? I think so. I mean, it's uh, yeah, we did find at least one. Uh, on the second paragraph, there's probably more uh, that we need to clean up, but this is, I don't think that it's going to substantially change, but I, I, yeah, it looks good to me. 
the only thing that I mean, there's a few typos that yeah. you may not find. The one, there are two things that three things that stand out to me in terms of context. One is that um, it talks about providing copies to uh, the federal cognizant audit agency and the state of Vermont. Um, I'm just thinking, you know, if we're doing this for our purposes, we're not necessarily delivering to those places. My first thought. Um, and my second is, in terms of the proposal, like what we would want back to understand from the uh, potential contractor, is we, we should see what a sample of the report findings would look like. Um, it talks, there's a bulleted, on the last page, there's a bulleted, you know, what should be included in the proposals. And it's about the types of servicing they would provide and the, the pricing and the, you know, technical requirements and all that. That's fine, but I think we should also say for example of report findings so we would know what we're receiving. Uh, and give some feedback on that if it's not enough. I could see Rosemary having some, like, well, I want more than this in their findings. Um, Oh yeah, the other thing is that there's a number of um, entities cited, like there's the audit, some audit regulation and another standards cited. I would just want to make sure that the references to those standards are the most recent. That they're current. That they're current, yes. they're not old things that have been modified. And there's two or three references throughout. Yep. Question, Beth. So you're kind of saying that under nature of services required, talking about the Single Audit Act of 1984 is a little bit of a fluff for this and doesn't need to be included? No, I think actually we do need to reference the standards that they follow, but I don't know if 1984, that particular- Okay, you're saying it might have been it revised since 1984. Okay. No, I think it's really good that they reference the standards. What are you looking for tonight? Or is this just a uh... if we're interested in you know kind of getting some more information from the OCT about where they're at and what their kind of recommendation would be? I think I kind of put this on the shelf and, and start working with the league. If we are more comfortable with kind of just going out and continuing to pursue what we think are our uh, kind of top priorities like the audit, then we should touch up what we can see on this and probably, again, still use the lead, but still ask them of, you know, here's what, what we wrote as a, 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 from your model policy, can you give this a look over for us? Uh, I could agree to that, but don't spend a lot of time on that. We, we need to get this moving forward. So your recommendation is to go out with what we got? Well, if, if it's not pressing, pressing, what you're talking about is going back to the league, maybe before next meeting and running it by them one more quick time and then coming that back. That would be one of our options. That, that was one of the ones you just said. So, yeah. you know, if that's not going to hold us up that much, it, it could tighten it up a little bit better and make it a better document. That's all. Yeah, I, I think I would recommend at least doing that. Yeah, no, I see no problem. With that either. So uh, you're bring it back again next. Month. Yep. Okay. Uh, I also did get an email from uh, Abby Friedman at the league uh, this evening. Uh, so I haven't really had a lot of time to dig into it, but she, you know, kind of reiterated that they're in the middle of upgrading the service, and they had she had a couple of consultants that she recommended that we have some phone calls with. So I think at our next meeting, I can hopefully bring in an updated audit RFP and a little bit more about consultants that we might bring in for our advice about our financial policies in general. Okay. I think everybody in agreement. So with our social media, I spoke to the library. And we need to add 
to the official designation of social media platforms. Uh, this is section five, part one. We need to add the official Johnson Public Library website. In part two, we need to add the official Johnson Library, Johnson Public Library Facebook page. Uh, and I also added uh, another bullet point for official posting so the Johnson Community Front Porch Forum. Those are the only changes made to the social media policy. We've been looking for uh, board approval adopting this new social media policy with these changes. Yes. So moved. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. A motion. Second. Second. I'm going to read the picture of that. We need all of our committees to have it out there. It's not an access. Um, I tried to read through it uh, pretty thoroughly, but I might have missed. Is there any language in here that pertains to uh, comments that employees might make on their own personal Facebook or you know any other social media accounts? Uh, I know there's something about not using your personal. Don't use your personal to make any public public comments. It should be made on the town or yeah. library or whatever. Uh, basically, it, it really tries to separate public and private Facebook accounts, and you should not be using your private to make public announcements. Okay. Uh, you can use your private to make private statements, but if you are in any way representing the town of Johnson, whether it is a committee member, an elected official, or an employee, you should only do that through the official channels. Uh, and you know, when you're speaking personally, you're speaking personally. So there are no positions that would be seen as someone's just sort of like always representing the town because of the role there. Right, so the analogy I would make is I believe in the role that I'm at a job. I always represent the university, even if I'm not representing the university, because people know that I work there and like know the role that I have there. And so I always kind of have that in mind a little bit. So I just, I was surprised because I noticed that it was like comments that are made on the personal page and consider it to be personal. I'm just wondering if there was any discussion or thought about. Yeah. There are some roles where no matter what you do, you want to do. I think that's a personal problem. I, I hear you, and it's related to social media, but to me, that belongs to personnel uh, policy as opposed to social media policy about account accounts. But if, yeah, for you. Like, Brian, you have something bad about the town. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I know what you're saying, and I tend to feel the same way about my position here. That I, I think I'm always kind of representing the town. I imagine that a lot of our elected officials also feel that way too. That they're that they are an elected official. That means they're always representing. Um, but we also the, the, they they represent the town, but they also represent when we're talking about the election officials, they also represent the voters and, and the other things. I have to maintain that I mean, a, a higher official, but kind of a different standard for that. And this policy has to kind of apply to everybody. So the policy is create a separation, don't confuse the two, and we're we're okay with it as long as they're separated. But yeah, if I posted it on my I don't really have a personal Facebook account, but if I add one and I post it there, you know, something about the town, even though it was on my personal account, I think that it would be confusing for a lot of people to see that coming from me. And that would be a difficult situation that I would prefer to just avoid rather than get into, you know, policy and yeah, We've seen lots of examples of that, though, like the other parts of the state. Yeah. Yeah, Burlington had the not to get off on too much of a tangent. Yeah, they had they had a series of 
people posting other big names. But to answer both your questions, you didn't really get an answer because we don't have a vehicle that addresses your particular concerns. I do not believe. No. You don't. The reason I was asking was, you know, as, as you said, there was examples around the state. There was one um, in Swami where a municipal employee was posting things that I think a lot of people in the community were made very uncomfortable by, and they went to the select board to try to have them addressed. And the select board essentially put their hands up and said, We have no way of addressing this because we have no policy in place. So I think, uh, you know, it, it would be probably smart to be proactive on this. And, you know, I, I, I don't think we hired anyone who's going to make any sort of statement like that. But just on the updates that we do, we, we want to be able to have some sort of recourse that, you know, people who are represented in the town aren't really made in a, in a bad way. Maybe that has to be a uh, personnel policy. Oh, yeah, it should be, yeah. Because that really deals with all the employees. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I think that, I agree that would be a better place to address it. It would come up here if there were, to the extent if there was confusion between a personal and a public posting, but uh, if it's clearly this person, but this person is posting things that make it difficult to do their job, then that's job related and I'd rather go to the personnel policy to deal with it. I'll go one step further. You know, if we're gonna make a personnel policy for the employees, it also should be good for this board too. Mm -hmm. A little harder to uh, enforce for the I know, but you can still have a uh, paper. We prefer that you did it. Can we get the motion on the floor or the second? More discussion. None. All those in favor say aye. 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 Historical Society. Uh, Historical Society budget request. The Historical Society would like the select board to consider depositing uh, this their uh, the difference between their. Uh, the revenue and expenses uh, to the Historical Society Reserve Fund. Um, I recommend that we take that under advisement and make no commitments until we're done writing the budget. Okay. What kind of money are they talking about? Uh, well, they have a $37,000 revenue in. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's okay. It's worth considering, but I don't recommend that we. But you don't remember how the article was written that the voters approved either. Okay, so we'll, we'll have to find that out. We'll have to find that out, and you know, it's all really part of the general fund, so it, it's kind of it all goes back to the voters somehow. Yeah, uh, it's a good point. Okay, enhanced by one. Uh, enhanced by one certification. I'm going to sign the enhanced 911 certification that uh, the E911 addresses are up to date to the best of our knowledge, and I am willing to continue to serve as our E911 coordinator. Uh, more or less annual. Uh, I think recertifying me is not every year, but. Do you need to be recertified? Yeah. Okay. What's the board's pleasure? So moved. Second. A motion second to recertify Brian. Any discussion? Who's recertifying as, as a E911 board? Board member. Any more? Any other discussion? All those in favor signify saying aye. 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 Both opposed? Congratulations, Brian. Mm -hmm. Voting Delaware. Yep. 
So, uh, no, it says town media, it should say town fair. Has any of you been to town fair? No. Nope. You should go at least one. Do they have any rides? <laughs> no rides, but you'll come back with a stack of pennies. Are they going to have that this year? Is there, I think it's both. It, it's currently planned for both. I was talking to Karen today, and they're still planning, but they're expecting attendance to be well. They're, they're expecting much lower in person attendance than was originally planned. They're doing Which, one day in person. Is that what it sounds like now? They have Which one town? day. Oh, sorry. Which town is it in this year? Uh, South Carolina. South Carolina. Is that the double tree? Yeah. Oh. So I printed it out because I thought it was interesting. Mm -hmm. This is <laughs> Want me to record this one? Yeah, there? please. Uh, it's one day in person and hybrid, and then it is four other days remote. And the other days have um, tracks, like when you go to a conference, they have a track. And the tracks are one track is equity, uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion. Uh, one track is the ARPA. Uh, one track is infrastructure. One track is human resources. And one track is cybersecurity. Uh, I was thinking I would have to take time off to do this, but I was actually thinking about choosing a track and was hoping that somebody else would be interested in choosing another track or two and we could share what we learned, our takeaways. And I think that's great. I'm going to all the trainings, I've gone to a number of them. Um, the value in having a voting delegate is at the annual meeting. Yeah. Uh, we as that's our one voice yeah. You know, um, yeah, so we we I think it's a great suggestion, Beth, because I know I want to go for the ARPA and I'd like to go for the HR. But I don't know if I've got time to do two days of this training. And then on our next one, my ICMA meeting is, is another conference I want to go to. And then our state association, the VTCMA, is having a training later in October, too. So I don't, October has a lot of conference days in it. I don't think I can take more than one day on for town fair. So, yeah, I would happily volunteer to, to share some of that and then we can. Uh, you know, as a board meeting after that, kind of review what we what we saw. When do, when do we have to submit the name for a voting delegate? Um, strictly, they like the voting delegate as early as possible. But uh, I've done when I was at the, the League of Cities and Towns. I did this. I hosted this meeting with them. Uh, a lot of people come the day of with their delegate certification. So uh, when is the date? September 29th is the in-person and then the remotes are October 4th through and the in-person is the the, the, the angle meeting. Yeah. Okay. Um you want to go? I don't want to let us make a commitment to go to the I definitely cannot go to 29th. Let me see my busy retirement schedule here. <laughs> I mean, I think, you know, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, you should really you should go. Really yeah, yeah, you, we did town meeting one year. Yeah. yeah, I would love to go in person. I just, we're launching a really, really big release that we've done before. This is so I guess I would entertain a motion to designate Nat as our voting delegate. So move. Second. Oh, you second. <laughs> Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those very signify saying aye. 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 Those opposed. Congratulations, Nat. In fact, lots of pens. They all get extra quick. <laughs> Uh, it will be, they can have an exhibit hall? Actually, they may not this year. No, no, no. <laughs> just have to take lots of selfies. And a lot of candy and treats. Yeah, we get a lot of coffee cups. 
most of the coffee cups downstairs are from town fair. <laughs> <laughs> they high quality ones, ceramic, or anything? Like Some of them are pretty good, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah the attorneys give up good ones. You see a lot of pens, well, they can afford it. Yeah. <laughs> I see your name. So uh, my uh, annual membership is up for ICMA. That's the International City and Town Managers Association. Uh, that's my inter professional group. For, that is the international branch of my, my professional group. Um, I get a lot out of the membership. I'd like to continue it. Uh, so I would like the, the town to pay for the membership. How much? It is. But it is about a thousand dollars. It's always a pleasure. We have a professional development budget, don't we? We do. So, a thousand dollars. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Now, uh, there's a part to this one. Uh, there's also the annual conference for ICMA which is available to attend remotely. Uh, I did the remote one last year. I traveled two years ago and did the remote one last year and I thought it was pretty good. Um, I'm interested in attending the remote one again. Uh, it is, I believe, 300.